Virgin Orbit, the satellite launch firm that was once a proud facet of billionaire Richard Branson's sprawling Virgin Empire, is teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. This is a far cry from the company's status just a couple of years ago, when it was celebrating its public stock debut in New York, complete with a rocket model in Times Square, and boasting a valuation of nearly $4 billion. But then, what led to this stunning downfall? This is a story of high hopes, ambitious technology, and harsh business realities, ultimately culminating in a struggle for survival. The fall of Virgin Orbit has sent tremors through the space industry, underlining the substantial challenges that new entrants face. Virgin Orbit's failure has exposed the intrinsic risks associated with the development and launch of new rocket systems. Every aspect of the rocket's design and construction needs to be precise to ensure safety, efficiency, and performance. This includes the propulsion systems, guidance systems, payload integration, and more. Not to mention the regulatory challenges and safety standards that must be adhered to. All these factors contribute to the high cost and complexity of developing a new rocket system. However, it is clear that the economic challenges also play a significant role. As the Virgin Orbit case demonstrates, having a technically feasible product doesn't necessarily guarantee its economic viability. The aerospace industry is particularly unforgiving of failure, and the price to pay for mishaps is extraordinarily high. As a result, new entrants like Virgin Orbit need to offer something unique or more efficient to gain a competitive advantage. But guess what? The company offered that too. Yet it still failed. Why? To understand this, we must take a whole array of additional factors into account. From a business perspective, Virgin Orbit's approach indeed initially appeared promising. The company aimed to make the concept of air-launched rockets more modern by leveraging advanced technology, which provided clients with the flexibility to launch from various locations, a distinct advantage over traditional ground-launched rockets. Virgin Orbit thus established Launcher 1, a small launch vehicle dedicated to launching these small satellites. However, this strategy encountered two significant challenges, the size limitation of their rocket and its hefty price tag. Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 was designed to deliver only a few hundred kilograms of cargo into orbit, which limited their target market to the smallest satellites or individual replacement spacecraft for large satellite networks. Had the company focused on this a little bit more, we could have seen a different output. But even setting this restriction aside and thinking it could have potentially been managed, we have yet another issue, the high cost of each launch. At $12 million or more per launch, Virgin Orbit was indeed much more expensive than less flexible but more efficient competitors such as SpaceX and Rocket Lab. How much did it really cost? For a brief comparison, Rocket Lab's Electron, which carries similar payloads to Orbit, charges just $7 million per launch, which is little over half of Virgin's price. Then why did Virgin Orbit charge so much? Well, to simplify it all, Virgin Orbit's steep launch costs were largely a result of the company's significant investment in developing its rocket and launch system. The company reportedly spent over $1 billion on these efforts, which is a significant sum even within the context of rocket development. For comparison, SpaceX's much larger Falcon 9 required about $400 million to get off the ground, while Rocket Lab has raised around $260 million when it began flying its Electron regularly. To secure additional funding for its plans, Virgin Orbit decided to go public through a merger with a special purpose acquisition company, SPAC. But this move did not generate the desired funding. As Virgin Orbit's operations were down, there was considerable reflection on what could have been done differently. One key issue pointed out was the execution of the business strategy. Virgin Orbit expanded too quickly after being separated from its parent company in 2017 and the increase in workforce led to an unsustainable expenditure. They required a high launch cadence to cover their costs, which was not possible given the market conditions. Their business model was not sustainable due to the high cost of their services and the insufficient demand for the specific launch capabilities. Virgin's chief operating officer, Tony Jengis, lamented on his farewell email to employees that they did not have the leadership or opportunity to demonstrate to the world what you can fully do and how this product could be an enduring force in the market. It's evident that the company's initial design decisions may have left insufficient room for success, despite the engineer's best efforts. A crucial milestone for the company was its first launch from UK soil, planned in January. 
However, this mission encountered a setback, resulting in a failure to reach orbit. This failure had ripple effects, including a decline in stock prices and a loss of investor confidence. Nevertheless, the repercussions of Virgin Orbit's bankruptcy have rippled across the space sector. The company reportedly owes between $100 and $500 million to various creditors. Some of its largest debts are owed to publicly traded space companies, such as satellite operator Spire and component supplier Redwire, each of which is owed over $1 million. Additionally, Virgin Orbit owes the U.S. Space Force $6.8 million, presumably in refundable launch deposits, and software provider Arkit nearly $10 million. The bankruptcy proceedings led to the liquidation of the company's assets, which included test stands, computers, and a heavily modified 747. These assets were auctioned off, generating a substantial sum of $36 million. However, some of Virgin Orbit's assets, including engines and components for its Launcher 1 vehicles, were held back from the initial auction. These remaining assets were eventually sold to Firefly Aerospace for $3.8 million. Firefly Aerospace, a private space company valued at over $1 billion, purchased Virgin Orbit's remaining assets, including the inventory at two of Virgin Orbit's former Long Beach, California production facilities and two additional engines stored at a Mojave, California test site. Firefly Aerospace itself is no stranger to financial setbacks in the space industry. The company emerged from the bankruptcy of Firefly Space Systems, which it acquired in 2017. Since its rebirth, Firefly Aerospace has been focused on rapid development and expansion, conducting two launches of its Alpha space rocket, with a third launch on the horizon. One of its most significant achievements to date has been the forging of an alliance with aerospace and defense giant Northrop Grumman. This partnership aims to jointly develop two rockets, the Antares 330 and the medium launch vehicle MLV. Firefly Aerospace aims to achieve a launch cadence of roughly one rocket every two months by the end of this year. The redesigned and upgraded Antares 330 rocket is expected to follow in the second half of 2024, followed a year later by the introduction of the MLV. In addition to these ambitious plans, Firefly has also announced plans to begin landing Blue Ghost lunar landers on the moon starting in July 2024. In a bid to provide end-to-end -end space services, Firefly recently announced its acquisition of rocket rideshare aggregator Spaceflight Incorporated from its current owners, Japan's Mitsuin Company and Yamasa Company. This acquisition is seen as a strategic move that will help Firefly speed toward its goal of launching payloads atop rockets, servicing some payloads in orbit, and landing others on the moon. Coming back to our original part, the story of Virgin Orbit serves as a stark reminder of the complexities and risks inherent in the commercial space industry. Despite the considerable technological achievements, Virgin Orbit's journey underscores the importance of a sustainable business model and a deep understanding of the market. The company's downfall can be attributed to its targeting of a small market segment and the high costs associated with its launch system, which ultimately proved unviable in the face of stiff competition from more efficient competitors. Looking ahead, the lessons learned from Virgin Orbit's venture will undoubtedly inform future endeavors in the commercial space industry. For new entrants, the case of Virgin Orbit also underlines the need to build more robust business cases and scrutinize their exposure. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. See you next time!